Page number 100 in the Schofield Rivers Edition Bible. Coming to Genesis chapter number 2 there, and I want to pick up a passage in an old Schofield. It'll be on the right-hand page. It'll be on the, uh, the right-hand corner, I believe. The Schofield note should be sufficient. How many, of you, how many of you have ever owned a Schofield reference Bible? Raise your hand. You know Schofield was divorced and remarried? He started the Philadelphia College of the Bible. That's the first Bible college I ever attended. Right, and even if you don't use a Schofield Bible or reference Bible, it has so influenced the leadership of, of so many denominations, you know, like uh, Moody Bible Institute, Dallas Theological Seminary, all these different places. It, that's the template that has been laid on the doctrine in North America. Well, um, Cyrus Schofield was friends with uh, Dwight Moody. Mm -hmm. Now, they, they split. Right. Uh, apparently, Dwight Moody figured out that uh, Cyrus Schofield was shady, but Moody kept the doctrine. Right. Okay. Uh, the, the Schofield people are the ones who started the Dallas Theological Seminary. Absolutely. 15,773 DTS alumni serve in 101 countries worldwide. Our graduates are heard on the airwaves of Christian radio, over Christian television, and through online distribution. If you've heard any of these programs, you've heard the influencing voice of a DTS graduate. Tony Evans, The Alternative. Chip Ingram, Living on the Edge. David Jeremiah's Turning Point. Erwin Lutzer's Moody Church Hour, or Running to Win. J. Vernon McGee, Through the Bible Radio. Ron Moore, Back to the Bible. Dennis Rainey, Family Life Today. Chuck Swindoll, Insight for Living. Robert Jeffress, Pathway to Victory. All of these ministries have a common thread. They all have people within who are trained by the world-renowned scholars at DTS. The cover shows the editor, Cyrus I. Schofield, with seven other men on the editorial board. One of these was Reverend James M. Gray, president of the Moody Bible Institute, one of the most influential organizations in evangelical circles of the day. There were also two other seminary leaders on the editorial board. Those lending their names were predominantly heads of seminaries and Christian colleges. What happened is the distribution took place through these seminaries. And then when young pastors were graduated from these schools and they went back out and took a church and started to, to teach from the pulpit, they had one of these in their hands. This is what was given to them. And I suppose that they were probably given to the seminaries. It was likely that the Oxford Press made it was very generous in making sure that all these people had these. When did it come together? It came together uh, in the early 1900s because John Nelson Darby's crazy doctrines went nowhere. They stayed in Great Britain among the Plymouth Brethren all through the 1800s. And there were uh, only pockets of people in the United States who even knew about it, that, that gave it any kind of, uh, of respect. But then there is a Cyrus Schofield and Schofield became the, the, the propaganda meister for John Nelson Darby's uh, doctrine. Now the first guy we're going to look at is John Nelson Darby and he actually, well, there's a lot of things he did. Let me give you a brief summary. He was born in 1800, died in 1882. He was a lawyer um, and then he became an An Anglican Bible teacher. Now Anglican simply means they came English, the word Anglo-Saxons became English. We speak the English language, it used to be the Anglos. But all that, being in England in religion means you came from the Church of England, which is a Protestant movement, it came out of Roman Catholicism. So he had all these Catholic doctrines, and it's evident in his writings if you look at what he teaches. He was the founder of what he called the Exclusive Brethren. He created his own little cult, basically. It was very exclusive. They had a lot of secrets. And even the brethren in later days had great arguments with him about the things he began to teach. Um, he's considered to be the father, the father of modern dispensationalism. And I don't know if you know this, Doc, but inside the Plymouth Brethren, there was a, a, a super radical sect all right, called the Exclusive Brethren. 
Okay. All right. And so they were even more privileged than the regular brethren. Not first I've heard of that. Yeah. So John Nelson Darby was the founder of the exclusive brethren. Okay. All right. He had even more knowledge than the rest of them. And so they came up with this over time they came up with this this doctrine of dispensationalism that God was dealing with humanity in dispensations. So this idea of dispensationalism that God operated with man in different ways in different ages, had different redemptive paths yes. throughout the ages. Nowhere is that taught in scripture.